Hey, uh, excuse me, miss. Do you have a second to talk? Don't worry. I won't bite. I mean, unless you... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, anyways, I won't take too much of your time. Uh, fine, okay. I, I understand a sweet and innocent girl like you has to go to her secondary classes. Okay, well, it's getting a little bit too loud over here. Do you mind if we walk around to the parking lot? Um, behind the... Uh, behind here? My favorite bench is over there. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. I promise I won't take you for too much time. I mean, take too much uh, uh, of your time. <laughs> All right. Well, first, what's your name? I'm sure it's just as lovely as your smile. Hmm, <laughs> I was right. That's a very beautiful name. Well, my father gave me a rather difficult name to pronounce. It's practically a tongue twister. So, growing up, people just called me Samael. Yeah, just like Samuel, but not as innocent. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, Samuel just sounds so formal. Samuel sounds like a farmer or a, or what do you call it, a choir boy. Come now, Samuel. Lead the family in prayer and after supper, take them livestock over there yonder. <laughs> At least my name sounds like I belong in a uh, action movie or something. Like, like maybe a, a villain or, or some cool buff guy with a five o'clock shadow and a, and a gruff voice is who, who, who's trying to get revenge or something. <laughs> I appreciate you think that of me, but I am far from innocent. Well, I would always be that one kid who, uh, I don't want to say bullied, but I took some jokes too far. I also would break all the rules whenever I could, and for some reason, I never ever got caught. Uh, I don't mean to get too graphic, but in high school, I was quite the ladies' man. Every Friday and Saturday was always a new adventure. The best ones were the ones on Sunday mornings when all the sinners pretended to be innocent coming here so that they can be, quote, forgiven just for being human. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no. No, my dear. There's nothing wrong with being innocent. However, I know for a fact that you are far from that. Even all polished like the china that your mom rarely takes out until the holidays. You are anything but innocent. <laughs> Is that so? Well, ask yourself this. If you're such an innocent girl, why do you have these in your purse? Oh. Very. Very bad. Sneaking these inside your place of worship? Not such a goody-goody two-shoes, are we now? <laughs> oh, trust me. That's a very stark silhouette. And it's not like anything else can make that shape. I just didn't say anything because I personally believe that people should be able to uh, partake in activities that make them happy. I myself don't use them. I have 
other ways of making myself reach nirvana. And what about this? <laughs> okay, fine. I guess your uh, creator, as you like to call them, made it since it came from the earth. But you know what didn't come naturally? That lower back tattoo that you tried ever so hard to hide in there. Now, why on earth would an innocent girl like you want to get a tattoo like that? Is this your way of rebellion? <laughs> rebellion. I know all too well about rebellion against a person. Unfortunately, they kicked me out of their home for all of eternity. Well, no, not just for my tattoos, which I do have quite the collection of all over my body. But all I did was just convince my siblings that father wasn't worth listening to. But going back to you, what was the final straw? What made you go against all those lessons and teachings that forbade you from, quote, scaring your body for your body is a temple? <laughs> okay, fine. But let's just say all of that is forgiven. There's just one last thing that I need to know. Why were you practically undressing me with your eyes? I mean, it's one thing to notice a handsome devil, such as myself, walking the streets or roaming the halls. But I saw you in the corner of my eye. Whenever I moved along the walls, in front of the colorful stained glass windows, underneath the wooden banisters holding my arms out, showing off my veiny forearms, the only eyes I felt on me were yours. And might I say, what an honor it is to have eyes such as lovely as yours on me. If that wasn't enough, I saw the way you fidgeted in your seat every time I looked back at you and smiled, my eyes examining every single beautiful inch of your face. And then your face was bright beet red and you were sweating up a storm. <laughs> it wasn't even that hot in there. And trust me, I have experienced burning hot heat. Or maybe... Oh, wait a second. Maybe the heat you were feeling wasn't in the room, but rather elsewhere. How does that expression go again? A burning hot sensation in your... <laughs> well... I think you know where. <laughs> I guess you aren't such an innocent schoolgirl as you pretend to be. I really think that you have all of these deep, secret desires. Look me in the eyes. Look deep into my eyes. Don't act so innocent. Stay put. Come closer. Embrace me. Do you really enjoy putting on this 
facade, pretending to be this innocent religious schoolgirl. Don't you wish you could just break the shackles and be who you really are inside? <laughs> There's a good girl. Acceptance is the best step. So I have this really rather wicked idea. Why don't we help release all of those inner demons, the ones you try to repress so, so much? <laughs> Follow me. Don't worry about anyone finding us in here. But if we get caught, wouldn't that be part of the fun? <laughs> mm. You taste like you enjoy that idea. And while the next service is in 10 minutes, I'm sure we can work with that. <laughs> Doesn't this feel so right? Doesn't it feel so liberating? Don't you feel so free? I bet this feels so sinful. <laughs> I guess you aren't such an innocent schoolgirl. After all, aren't you? Naughty, naughty. But I bet I can make it feel so 